Welcome to Easy Email Marketing. I'm your host, Yael Keown, mum, FIFO wife, MBA, coffee lover, survivor superfan, and creator of the email experience. In Easy Email Marketing, you'll benefit from my nearly 20 years experience where I'll be teaching you all the tips, tricks, and insider info on how to create feel-good, non-spammy experiences for your subscribers. Let's get stuck in. Welcome back to Easy Email Marketing. I'm your host, Yael Keown, and today we are going back to basics with one of the most essential, if not the most essential elements of your email marketing strategy, and that is your welcome series. So your welcome series is your opportunity to make a fantastic first impression and get those crucial first sales. It's sent out when your new subscriber is most likely to take action. So they have just signed up to your email list and let's not underestimate the gravity of that. You know, people don't sign up just willy nilly anymore. They sign up because they want something. They're looking for help with something. You have enticed them with some sort of great opt in incentive that helps them with a challenge or frustration. And if you want more on um, the lead magnets that are working now, make sure to check out episode 74, um, where I talk about the different reasons people might want to sign up to your list. But these subscribers have just signed up. And now it is time for you to show up and support them. So this means as soon as they um, sign up, you send obviously their lead magnet or you um, deliver their coupon code, whatever it is that you have promised them. And then you should be sending a series of emails across one or two weeks, um, maybe five to seven emails. And while this sounds like a lot, remember that this is when someone is actively looking for help or perhaps just a great pair of shoes. So they might have questions. They might have doubts. They might have concerns. They just have second thoughts. Um, And this is your opportunity to help them make an informed decision about what the next best step is for them. So yes, you might be sending more emails than usual, but that is okay because that is during the time that someone is actively looking for a solution to a problem. So If you're concerned a little bit in terms of, okay, they signed up to this and I'm worried they're going to get other things as well. My pro tip here is definitely to make sure that they are not getting any other emails. So when they first sign up while they're getting this welcome series, they're not going to get like your newsletter or your sales campaigns or your promotions or anything like that. And also if that they do take action, so if they do buy or they book in, um, then they don't continue through the rest of the series. You know, they pulled out from it and then they just go on with whatever the next step is for them. So that can take the discomfort and some of the concerns away from you if you're worried about, okay, they might just get too much content. But we definitely want to send more emails than you're probably comfortable with. It doesn't mean it has to be one every single day, like some people say. We can space it out a little bit more than that, but we still need to make sure we have um, these emails going out. And it's important because Sometimes for someone to make an informed decision about something, they need a good amount of information. And if we drag that out across weeks or months, they might have just given up on it or they might have made another decision. So we need to make sure we're getting that most important stuff right up front. So what should go in it? What should go in your welcome series? Well, as I mentioned, it's all about helping them to make an informed decision about what the right next step is for them. So you really need to think, about what it is that that first step, um, what first thing you want them to do. So, you know, for a lot of businesses for e-commerce, this will be pretty simple. You want them to shop and buy their first product uh, from your store. Um, But if you have a lot, if you're a service-based business or you have a lot of programs and you have a lot of offers, sometimes that could be overwhelming. We don't want to give them a full range of choices just yet. So I want you to think about what is that initial offer? What is that first thing that you want them to buy? And if you've created a lead magnet, the lead magnet should be directly correlated to whatever this first offer is. Now, I'm saying offer in terms of something they want to buy. It could also be to get onto a wait list for a program. It could be just to book a discovery call, although I would absolutely encourage you to make sure you give it a really um, clear outcome-based name. Don't just say book a discovery call or a clarity call or a complimentary call. Say book an email marketing roadmap call. Like it has a really specific outcome of what that free call 
might be. Okay, so we want to think about, okay, where do we need, what, what do we want them to get first? So what is that first step? And then we fill in the gaps. So where are they now? What did they just sign up for? What's their lead magnet? What um, did they fill in their details for? And what's that first step that we want to take? Okay, and then we fill in the gaps with what do they need to know um, to make a good decision about that? What do they need to feel? Um, and also what gets in the way? What excuses come up? that might prevent them from taking that action. So that's generally the big overview of the types of things that you want to be putting in. So think about those two bookends and what goes, like think that they're on this little path and where they're going to go after that. Okay, so let's get a bit more practical in terms of some examples. So uh, first of all, let's just start with the classic e-commerce, say 10% off coupon or free shipping get, gets people to sign up. If that's the scenario, obviously they are right on that borderline from purchasing. So we would want to have a quicker, snappier, you know, way to get people to convert. So the first email absolutely would do, deliver the coupon code um, and ask them to shop now. Like you will be asking them to take action immediately because that's what they've indicated to you that they're interested in doing. If they don't take action on that first email, then we want to make sure we've got other emails following it that remind them about their discount as well as helps them make that decision. So this could be things like sizing guides or how to make the best choice. Um, It might be talking about the quality of your items, what makes them different, any guarantees, shipping information. Maybe it's most popular items. Um, Maybe it's a bit of FOMO, like sharing testimonials um, and some social proof. So they reinforce making a great decision. Also, of course, you would introduce yourself and, you know, let them know about what makes you different and, you know, what your brand is all about. So we can start with that offer. And if they don't take you up, then help them make that decision. Even if that information's on your website somewhere, we can't trust that someone's going to find it. You know, make sure to have that all those details in that welcome series and definitely have a last strong call to action saying, "Get don't forget your 10% off. Um, it's um, And ideally, if you can, like if you have Clavio with Shopify, for example, you could make that expiring. So there is actually legitimate scarcity that they have to take action before it expires. On the flip side for e-commerce, if you are getting them to sign up to a, to a general form or a general lead magnet, um, you can, of course, try to get them again. It's, you'll probably still be sending similar emails. Maybe you might have a more helpful email in there. Um, about depending on what sort of lead magnet you had. So, for example, if you had some sort of styling guide, maybe you have some more styling tips in there and you might have, but but you feature some of your products within those tips. So you might come at a bit more of a helpful approach because they haven't immediately said, oh, I'm interested in buying. They've signed up for something else, but you're introducing your products. And maybe then more towards the end, you start to get a bit, start a bit of a stronger sell. Like this is our favorite items. This is what we suggest you get. Um, and if they still don't take action, you could also think about offering that 10% offer or that coupon code at the end of the welcome series. Um, so it's not the first um, way people sign up and hopefully you get people buying straight away, um, but it gives them just that reason to take action immediately. So that's for e-commerce. Now, if you have a service-based business or you sell digital products like courses or memberships or anything um, anything that you know is an online program, then likely you would have had them sign up via a lead magnet, so some sort of you know checklist or guide, something that they will, you know, that helps them solve with a challenge or problem that they have. If someone has signed up more for just a general sign up to my community to get tips, advice, etc., you can absolutely still go through this process, but you're talking to a broader range of challenges. That's the only difference. So what could you put in for this scenario? Now, again, when we're talking services or we're talking digital products, um, sometimes there is a bigger decision to make and it depends on the scale of the thing. So obviously, if it's just, if you're just trying to sell, you know, a $10 or $50 product at the end of this series, um, you probably don't need to do as much effort in terms of selling and bringing someone onto board. But obviously, if you are trying to sell a $1,000 course, 
you know, that's going to take some time. They might not be doing that off the back of just five emails and you might need to think about including some scarcity in there. So offering a discount, etc. Same with services. So you are asking not only for people's money, but you're asking for someone's time. You're asking for someone also possibly to make a change or prioritize themselves, making themselves feel worthy. So we need to think about these extra layers that come into making a decision. So the purpose of the welcome series here is to introduce them to what you're about to, at the end, offer some sort of introductory offer that's an easier first step for them to take. But in between, letting them know the essentials that they need to know. So this is, okay, there might be a little bit if you're offering a specific program, it would be the what it includes, who it's for, all of that stuff. But Sometimes what people need to know and understand are things like, you know, what the real problem is. Like they might think the problem is something and that's what your lead magnet was all about. But you're like, well, actually, the real problem is your mindset behind the whole thing. Um, We also really need to show you understand. So you want to um, connect with their challenge or frustration and using stories to show you really understand it, not from just a theoretical point of view, but, you know, a practical point of view. So it could be your stories or from, from other clients. So things that you could include here are things like, obviously, um, the first email would, apart from delivery, would be to introduce yourself. And please do not feel like you need to put your full bio in one email. You do not need to put your whole life story um, and your whole philosophy about everything in one email. Instead, I recommend, you know, weaving elements of you throughout all of the emails. So through your stories, mentioning, you know, your pets or your kids, Um, but you don't have to say all of that in the first one. In the first one, you're just saying, this is who I am. This is how I can support you. So I understand your challenge or frustration. And this, I'm very passionate about what I do because, you know, I experienced it for myself. Um, maybe you share a little bit of your story, but it's not so much, it's not like your formal bio. And you said, and now I help people with this. Um, yes, you might weave in mentions of your qualifications, but don't make it like, yeah, so formal. Make it conversational, but make it focused around them, you know, connecting with their challenge or their frustration. Then following on from that, you know, a couple of great ideas are things like an email that's about you are not broken, um, you know, that this is actually normal, you know, if to feel the way you feel or to struggle with whatever it is they sign up for. Um, And, or along similar lines is like, here's the truth. Here's what's really going on. Um, Or here's what people don't tell you, but I know because I coach people through this and I actually see it all the time. So, you know, you're, you're completely normal. So sharing some of that sort of stuff to give them that reassurance Of course, we can share some really helpful tips and quick tips that probably relate similar to that lead magnet. And the purpose here is to show that you know your stuff, like you've got something really practical and helpful and they're like, yes, I love it. It gives them a taste of perhaps what's coming if they stick around on your list, but it also shows, okay, yep, this person knows their stuff. Another great email you might want to include is an excuse buster. So what? think about why someone doesn't buy. You know, what are the reasons that they give? Time and money are often two big ones. Um, But think about, you know, saying, you know, combating that right up front rather than worrying about that later on. You can answer objections. You can bust myths. You can talk about some of the mistakes people make. Then, of course, you have present your offer um, and make sure you're talking about your offer, as I mentioned, as having some sort of really specific outcome and talk about the benefits. Don't just talk about it's got five modules, 10 workbooks, all of that. Talk about what the solution is. Present this as the shortcut. Present this as the answer. And then after I've made the offer, and again, you might want to reiterate this a couple of times, or you might want to um, have a second one, which has FAQs or, you know, how it works, what you can expect if you want work with me. Um, And then I like to round out the welcome series in this scenario with something else finally helpful or giving them extra resources and extra steps. So a few tips that you could um, use throughout this, uh, like using the PS space. So sometimes I hear I've spoken about, you know, writing an email about you are not broken or first the introduction email, but people might be ready to take action immediately. We don't need to wait to email five or six to make that offer. So you could have use a PS space, say PS, if you're interested in taking action straight away, here's how you can do it. As I've mentioned, use stories as much as possible. Speak in terms that they understand 
you know, relate to what they're interested in, use examples. Um, if you are stuck for this, use chat GPT. Honestly, if you're thinking like, I really want an example of how this service would help a really busy working mum who struggles with this and wants this. Can you write a little story about that? And you'd be amazed at what it could come up with, or you can, you can give it little scenarios and then you make it into your own words. You, you add your personality, but use, um, if you struggle with story, chat GPT is really helpful <laughs> for that as well. And please do not throughout all of this distract from your call to action. I see so many welcome sequences where people just feel like they have to tell everyone everything the minute they sign up, but that is overwhelming and then someone does not know what to do. Make sure you are very clear about your call to action and don't be distracting by, oh, follow me on Instagram or check out my blog or my podcast, or I also have this service or I also have this course. Keep it highly focused for that first step. You've got time. They are in your community afterwards. Perhaps in that last email, after you've made the offer, you could say, hey, if you're looking for more help, I've got this fantastic blog. I've got this podcast. Here's some of my top articles, something helpful like that. But it's at the end, that's after. We don't need to distract from that by mentioning all the different ways that they can engage with you right from the beginning. You know, baby steps. We don't want to overwhelm them. Okay, so there's my thoughts on your welcome series and what you can put in it. Hopefully that's given you some ideas, got those creative juices flowing. Um, And really, as long as you, as I mentioned, are highly focused to what their offer is going to be and that you actually have these emails in there, you can't go too far wrong and you can always experiment and play. Also think about, you know, past emails that have worked well and weave those in. If you want more support with this, though, and if you want things like more ideas, you want email swipe files that you can steal, if you want, um, you know, some more strategy about um, how we can really nut out and make this a fantastic welcome sequence for you and also how to get it all set up, you know, technically in your software or anything, email marketing, then the email experience is the perfect place for you. So inside, you get all the training on strategy and check that you need to implement impactful and converting email marketing strategies, plus amazing support through coaching calls, tech checks, copy critiques, and just generally giving you ideas and feedback on your welcome sequences or whatever it is you're creating. So learn more and get on the wait list at yalekeown.com forward slash experience. I would love to have you in there and would love to help you craft amazing welcome sequences and everything else that follows. Thank you for joining me today. Uh, I would love to hear from you about what you've enjoyed from this episode or what you want to know more about in future episodes. So please let me know over on Instagram. I am at Yale Keown, and I will see you in the next episode. Thank you for listening to Easy Email Marketing. It's an absolute honor that you chose to listen. If you love this episode, then it would mean the world to me if you could leave a review so that others can find this podcast and make their email marketing easy too. Finally, make sure to subscribe so that you don't miss a thing. Until next time, have an awesome day and make sure to keep showing up and serving in those inboxes.